Um, all right, a little bit more time for the equity markets on the back of this uh, accommodative stance once again from Bernanke. H how long can this run, this, uh, this, this rally? Yeah, I mean, it's weird, actually, because uh, if we looked back uh, last week to the non-farm payrolls number, the uh, you know U.S. equity markets in particular reacted very well to what was a strong piece of uh, economic data, uh, sending bond yields, uh, bond yields flying higher and obviously, you know, but worrying that, uh, you know, w worries that tapering would probably start sooner. So uh, we were starting to think that equities respond were responding to sort of positive growth news rather than just liquidity. Um, but it looks in the futures market, like you say, that, uh, that, that equities are responding well to this. For us, nothing is really really changed on the back of that statement, to be honest. We still expect tapering to start in September, uh, with QE probably finishing sometime towards the end of Q1 next year. Uh, and you're not even going to get probably your first rate rise until the year following. So, what, what, I mean, it does smack of, of jitters, though, doesn't it? You know, do you react to growth or do you react to more signs of accommodation? Um, what, what in particular is safe for you right now? Yeah, I mean, it feels like there's very few safe havens, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, if you really want to stay safe, then cash is still your only asset class, probably. Um, but for us, I think the more important thing to watch is that medium-term growth expectations in the U.S. are rising, and probably with good reason as well. You know, the deficit is tumbling lower, which means that, uh, you know, that the potential headwind from the government is also, you know, falling uh, lower as, as that goes. Uh, and also, you know, the employment picture is improving, and the U.S. consumer for us is already in pretty good shape shape, uh, if you remember, uh, to account not just for its, uh, for its liabilities, but also for its assets. Uh, and so for us, if the medium term growth picture is rising, then that, uh, that leaves you uh, buying equities. All right. And, and, in, and what are you buying in particular in Europe? We've got uh, another debt auction in Italy today. That, of course, comes on the back of the downgrade. But they're talking of a salvation deal in Portugal, respite for Greece. I guess a pretty usual summer in the Eurozone. Yeah, I mean, it, you can. there's plenty of things to keep your eye on in, in Europe, and they'll no doubt keep you awake and keep the hair falling out. Um, I think the point, uh, you know, alongside all of that, you've got Berlusconi drama still going on, and, you know, the funding, the party funding scandal in Spain, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, you could go on. Uh, but I think the most important things to watch, there's two, uh, really, and that is the things that we've learned over the last couple of years and things that uh, we were reminded of last week, uh, and that's namely that the ECB uh, is willing to remain on the front foot and that is very, very important for us because that should uh, ensure uh, us against some of the sort of worst bits of the crisis that we saw in the sovereign markets last year. Um, but also the other thing we've learned over the last couple of years is that actually some of the politicians and the major actors, including ECB and the German politicians, are actually probably more formidably committed to the Eurozone than we might have suspected beforehand.